what I want to show you in this video is the basics of generating a cell shaded look in the node editor. Now the node editor can be a little intimidating, but knowing a bit about how to use the node editor will give you a lot more artistic creativity because there are so many things the node editor can do that you just can't do with a standard surfacing system. We'll look at those later on. So let's have a look at how to recreate the basic cell shade using the nodes instead of using the standard texture or surface editor. What I'm using here is I'm using that character that where I've simplified the surface to one rather than having lots of separate surfaces like skin and hair and, and so forth. And you saw in one of the previous videos to do that, it's really just been UV mapped with this swatch of colors. Like I said, the workflow, that the reason I do this for workflow is because things such as nodes and shaders and those kind of things, you can't mass edit a lot of surfaces. So this makes it a lot easier to manage the entire character with one surface using nodes. Now, the other downside of doing that is that with Viper tool, you can't see the colors because they're UV mapped. And like I said in my other video, the Viper tool just doesn't see geometry. So it can't understand where to map things with UV maps. So let's have a look at how we recreate the basics of the cell shade look using that light incidence angle and so forth. So I've hit shift and clicked on T to remove the UV map from the standard color channel. I'm going to start by adding that UV map back on but using the node system. So we'll click the little tick box next to the edit nodes button to activate it. And then we'll click the edit nodes button to bring up the node editor. I want to add the color back onto the surface and by default when we have a node editor we always have like a master node. This is the node that we're feeding information into to control it. In this case it's a surface node you see it's got all the settings for the surface in here. So let's add that UV map, that color UV map back on. So click on the add node menu at the top. An image is a 2D texture so from this 2D textures menu we'll select an image and that brings up an image node. Now this is a node that applies an image to the surface. So let's double click on this to bring up its settings. And in here we'll say at the top we have image. Let's pick that. There it is there. And then let's go down to this section here where it says mapping, which is the same as what we have in our standard texture editor. We've got planar, spherical, cylindrical, and go UV map, UV map, UV colors. That's it. And let's close that. Now to plug this color into the surface, we simply click on its output. And outputs are the dots that appear on the right side of a node. These are what the node generates. So if we click on the red dot next to the color, hold down the mouse and drag, we can connect that to that. Now it goes black because like I said, the Viper tool doesn't know how to map colors onto a UV map because it doesn't see the geometry information. So we'll double click. And with pretty much every node that generates colors or textures, there's always a BG color or background color. Imagine this is kind of like the base color in our surface editor and it's black. So it's going to generate a black surface. So if we change this, so for instance, let's make it, let's make it reddish, a bit of green. In fact, let's just make it, if we right click in the color swatch and drag, let's make it yellow. There we go. So at least we can see something. Now, node stuff doesn't show up in OpenGL. So there's another downside to the workflow. However, we can see the shading and that's the important part. So I've put the color UV map back on the surface and we can't really see what it's doing until we do a render, but it is there. Now, I kind of run out of space very quickly in this editor, so what you can do to just kind of get a bit more space in the window is to do that. If you've got a dual monitor set up or a higher resolution than this video, then you can always drag it around the screen and so forth. The only reason it's a little bit chunky here is simply for the fact that I'm trying to fit it inside this recording as we go. So let's go add node and let's go gradient. Now let's add in a gradient node and this will use this to generate our cell shaded effect on the surface. If I double click on this, I've got some inputs in here. 
you notice we've got x, y, and z, slope and incidence. Now incidence is from the camera, which is fine if we're doing that, but we want to do a light incidence. You notice that the inputs are very limited, so what we need to do with a node editor is we need to calculate the light incidence angle and plug it into the input. So we can input or feed anything into a gradient, which is, makes it a little more powerful than what we have in the layered system. So let's get the light incidence angle to the surface. To do it, it's a little more it's a little more complicated because you have to do it with a lot more steps, and that's what probably confuses people with nodes. It's almost like in a way a technical programmy structural sort of layout. Now there's a couple of ways we can do it. One is the really easy way. Now let's do it the easy way to begin with. Add node, layers, and scalar layer. Now what layer nodes are, and they don't have much in here, but if we double click, they're just the basically the texture editor, but in a node format. So in here I'm going to say let's get a gradient. Let's get the light incidence angle for key light. Now you'll probably recognize this from what we did in the standard system. And at the first key, let's make that zero. So it's black edge on, white front on. Now we could just plug this directly into luminosity if we wanted to, which is probably the easy way of doing it. The only downside with this is we don't really have we don't really have a lot of flexibility once we've used this. And if we wanted to control different aspects of the gradient and how it works and everything else, then we're back might as well just be doing in the standard surface system. So what I'm going to do is use this just for calculating the light incidence angle. It's the quick and dirty easy way. There's another way and I'll share that later. But I'm going to grab the scalar and I'm going to plug it into input. So I'm going to use this to just feed black to white for the shading. And then in this gradient, this is the node based gradient, you know, set the inputs now grayed out it's because it's being controlled here. What we do is we can just go in here, say uh, 70%, and say type step in here 100%. That's pretty good. And we can take that, which is, if you notice, is the alpha value. I haven't actually used color in here, though you can um, get the alpha, which is a percentage, and feed that into luminosity. And there is our basic cell shade. Now the reason it doesn't look quite right is because I've got diffuse turned on, so it's shading and also adding some luminosity into it. So I just turn diffuse to nothing. So there's a quick, we can kind of crunch those down a bit by just clicking on that widget at the top, just to hide all the settings. So we've generated our basic cell shade. And you can adjust it in here as you do normally. You can always add another key in here. Change this one to uh, 80. Make that step as well. It's going to have a three band if we wanted to. Okay, so you can do all the same things that we were doing with the standard system, but this time using nodes. And we'll click close that. Now it's a little hard to tell because of course we can't see the colors. So if we do a quick test render with the F9 key, you can see we're back to what we had with the other system. So nodes based uh, effects such as that aren't actually that hard to do. So there's some real basics to get you started. 